out of peoples. Let's talk about vehicle maintenance without getting too much into the drama of everything that's going on. As we've already covered, I was towed 260-something miles to these guys, Champion Chevrolet in Reno, and I had actually spoken to them several months earlier because I had concerns over the engine, and I talked to them, and they had told me that it would be about $7,000 to have the engine replaced. Um, a little more specific is they said three or four thousand dollars to work on the engine or seven thousand dollars to put a new engine in it and um, a lot of that was labor that was the same because if you don't know to uh, to get to the engines in most of these vans like the Chevy Express and the um, the Ford E series you're essentially taking the whole front clip off of the engine and there's a couple thousand dollars in labor when it gets that extensive, whether you uh, replace the engine or if you're looking at uh, lifters and cams and things like that. So um, I basically made the determination at that point that given that expense, I would spend the $7,000 and replace the engine when the time came. And uh, with everything going on, uh, it felt like the time had come. And so, you know, I made that, uh, I made that commitment to, to get towed 260-something miles to Champion Chevrolet in Reno to get this work done. So essentially, my decision is to spend the approximately $7,000 that they said it was going to be for the new engine. And that engine comes with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. I don't have to worry about the engine. For, for that length of time, and that's that's worth the price to do that. And I walked into the uh, dealership ready to pay the money for it. When I got there, I was handed off to uh, this David guy. This is his card. I was handed off to him, and he starts taking all my information down uh, about the vehicle and this, that, and the other, and then someone is over there, like, you know, on a dime like this, they're doing all the dealership stuff. They put uh, the little paper floor mats in, the paper seat cover, all that stuff, and start getting my vehicle ready to 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 bring in and, and do whatever with, well, which was cool because we um, I'd actually set an appointment with them while I was stuck on the road. And so we're there, and then this uh, David guy, he starts talking about needing to keep the vehicle for three days to do diagnostics which raised a red flag with me because, you know, I've already spoken to these people. I've told them, I want the new engine. Let's get it done. And as uh, it goes from there to, we need your vehicle for three days for a diagnostic. And they're going to charge me $150 for that. Um, that, uh, not a super big deal. I don't know what they need to diagnose when I'm asking for a new engine. Uh, and we've already talked about it. But the problem with is doing the van life is that um, that's my home. He wanted me to give up my vehicle for three days. I uh, was in there on a Thursday. That would be basically, uh, you'd be looking at Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, and that doesn't include the weekends. So um, that's my home. So now I've got to find somewhere to live for five days while you're doing vehicle diagnostic that I don't even understand because we've already discussed yanking the engine out. I've also talked to them about spending a little more money and replacing the engine motor mounts while they're in there because that's just a few hundred dollars more. And so I'm, 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 uh, I'm already upselling the deal without them even trying to upsell me. You know, I'm already trying to give them, you know, more money than we discussed for other stuff. And um, they're really hooked up on this, uh, me leaving the vehicle there for three business days. So at that point, I discussed logistics because I've got to find somewhere to stay because that's my home. And this guy interjects in with it. I can't stay on their property, which I hadn't asked. But, I mean, that kind of aggravated me a little bit, you know, because I'm not trying to camp out on your property. Hadn't asked. Didn't want to. There's uh, plenty of places to stay to figure it out. I've just got to get those logistics arranged. Um, but I, I asked him if we could schedule it for next week 
that way we're not rolling over a weekend because then I'd, if I've got to leave it there for three days or whatever, for whatever time period, I would rather have it scheduled, especially not over a weekend if I'm going to pay somewhere to stay. So at that point, he told me that I can bring it in next week and that it'll be three days from whenever I bring it in and drop it off for them to do diagnostics. They wouldn't give me, they wouldn't give me a scheduled date on it. It's you drop it off, you get it back in three days. Um, which, you know, seems kind of crazy to me. You know, the whole thing seems kind of crazy to me. So why do you need it for, for three days when we're replacing the engine? You know what we're doing. So um, at that point, I uh, started discussing uh, symptoms of the vehicle and what it was doing. Since he's telling me that I've got to leave it there for three days and I have to do the diagnostic, I have to pay for it, I start uh, explaining to him the symptoms of what it was doing and, I mean, I could just tell from the interaction it was in one ear, out the other ear. He's not documenting anything. He's not writing anything down. He's just um, doing nothing. And this this guy is, he's the um, eyes and ears, or whatever you want to call it, between me and the mechanic. He's the go-to person between me and the mechanic, and the mechanic. And what the vehicle is doing has to be relayed by him to the mechanic and then the mechanic will relay whatever to him that'll come to me. And if he's not listening to me, that um, this is not a good sign right off the bat. So at this point, he goes and uh, calls in to the parts department, and he informs me that the engine that I need is not in stock. It's back-ordered and says that it could be a couple weeks or a couple months. And... Uh, and kind of that was that. And um, I'm there's 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 no way I am staying in this town for several months through winter waiting on an engine. So that kind of really threw everything up in the air. And at that point, I hit the brakes and I told him, you know, I'm not leaving my vehicle here over the weekend. I'm going to have to make arrangements and then I will come back next week and we can pick this up next week because there's no sense. If I'm staying at a motel, you know, a couple extra nights in the motel or whatever I decide to do, that's just money out of my pocket. And at this point, I'm also concerned with the fact that you want to hit me for a diagnostic charge and then you're telling me that the engine I need isn't even in stock and you can't tell me when it will be. So, I mean, the whole thing... It just threw the whole thing up in the air, and I hit the brakes and left to regroup. So I did the only sensible thing there was to do. I went and found a Chinese buffet, and I went and stuffed my face, and then I went back to my van and uh, just regrouped for a little while. From there, I called the Chevrolet dealership, which is in Carson City, Nevada, which is about 35 miles south of Reno, I wanted to talk to somebody at a different Chevy dealership that was independent of the one here and just to see um, see if I could get a better experience there. And it wasn't too terribly far away. So that's what I did. They told me that they would love to help me out and take care of my vehicle, but my vehicle was too large. It's too big, it's too tall for their service base. They are a small dealership and they cannot accommodate me which is a theme a lot of y'all might want to keep in mind if you're in like a box truck conversion, anything like that. If you're in a, a high top van, the larger your vehicle is, the harder it is for you to find uh, service stations that can service your vehicle because they have to have bigger, heavier lifts, taller bays, all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. They did transfer me to their parts department and I spoke to their parts people about the engine. I gave them the VIN number and they looked up the engine, all that good fun stuff. And they were able to tell me that the engines are in fact on back order, but they're listed as being en route to uh, Detroit or Michigan, wherever it is. So the, uh, the engines have been built. They're on a truck being shipped to Chevy. And from there, once they get to the Chevy place in Michigan, then I would be looking at about a week to have the engine shipped out west. So they were able to tell me that basically there's around a two-week backlog um, or back order on the engines, not several months, 
like the guy in Reno, um, champion Chevrolet in Reno told me, he didn't, um, he, he could have talked to his parts department and he could have found out what the back order was, what the time was. He could have found out all of that, but he just didn't really seem to be bothered with the seven or eight thousand dollars that I was getting ready to spend in their service department. I guess it just wasn't enough or something. I don't know, but, uh, bad vibes, very, very, very bad vibes. But the, um, the people in Carson City, uh, they are apologetic because, you know, they're all Chevy, this, that, and the other. But they suggested that I go and I talk to the, the GM Cadillac dealership in Reno and see if I had a better experience there. And that place is actually right across the street from um, Champion Chevrolet. So it literally was walking across the street. So I went in, I talked to them, I gave them the VIN number, and they were actually just getting ready to close. So I took a picture and I emailed the VIN information over, and they were able to give me a quote to replace the engine. I got that the next day, um, where with the Champion people, you know, I'm really getting nothing concrete without leaving the vehicle with them for three days. So, I mean, it tells me that their three-day response was questionable at best because they gave me a price uh, the next day. I'm going to put a screenshot of part of the quote that I got from the Cadillac GM dealership. I'm going to put that up right about now. They quoted me the wrong engine. This is a compressed natural gas engine with rear heat, and it's uh, several thousand dollars more than it should have been. So I replied back to them about that, and they never responded back. I got nothing, no response, period, back from them uh, on that. And it's like, thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs> So at this point, I reached out to another automotive shop in the area. They're not a uh, hole-in-the-wall or um, like a one-shop thing. I think they've got four locations in the area. So they're a, kind of a larger larger local company. And um, I gave them all the information. And there again, they were able to give me a quote the next day. I didn't have to leave a vehicle with them for three days or any of that stuff. And I will bring that up right now. So these guys want almost twice as much as a dealership for a engine with a shorter warranty. Yeah, so there's that. Okay, so um, I ended up emailing Christensen Automotive back and I questioned their figures because as you could see, uh, they were actually the most expensive of the three prices I've gotten so far. Uh, three, let's loosely loosely say Champion Chevrolet because they've given me the ballpark seven thousand dollar figure. Uh, with the fact that everyone else is you know way above that is just kind of raising red flags and making me wonder uh, what's going on. And am I being jerked around by Champion Chevrolet because they screwed up and gave me a price that was too low and they're just trying to push me off? Or, or, or what? I'm not sure. Um, I'm just, you know, each each time I go around in circles, I just have more questions and more doubts, and i just getting more frustrated with the whole process. It's just really frustrating me. But um, at, at the end of the day here, I know that it's going to be several weeks before I get anything done. So... Um, I'm just kind of uh, mulling over that in my brain. And uh, the, uh, the the big thing, like, with this uh, Christensen Automotive people, and I actually talked to a couple other places, and they're all using um, different engines. And uh, essentially what I'm looking at is these engines that they're using are almost the same price as the dealership engine, except for they come with three-year warranties instead of five. And, I mean, we're talking, like, $40 price difference between one of these engines and the uh, Chevy engine. Uh, $40 for two years of addition of $40 less, and you're getting two years less warranty on it. And that's just, that isn't working. So, where I'm at, I'm still leaning towards going back to Champion Chevrolet. 
I don't like the service. I'm frustrated with them, but I want that engine and I want that warranty. So that's kind of where things are at this point.